Now to that scandal involving college basketball. All leading to allegations of dirty recruiting. FBI wiretaps intercepted telephone conversations. Top tier program that rested on corruption. Emmanuel charges. Richardson, one of four coaches accused of steering college It's a stars. colossal mess, and it's not going to go away anytime soon. College basketball's biggest story last year was undoubtedly the FBI investigation that resulted in the arrest of 10 people. Arizona's Emmanuel Book Richardson was among the four Division I assistant coaches indicted last fall by a federal grand jury. His charges include conspiracy to commit bribery and wire fraud. He faces 60 years in prison. Richardson is unable to comment on his current legal status, but I traveled to Tucson, Arizona to speak with his wife and kids about that fateful day last fall in 2017 when their lives changed forever. Aaron, where were you on September 26 when your husband, Book, was arrested by the FBI? I was in New York City. I had just gotten there the night before. That next morning, my daughter woke me up to that horrible, I, I could still hear it in her voice to this day, and she says, Mom, the FBI is at the door, they're arresting Dad. What was your reaction? I didn't know what to think, so I, I jumped up and I grabbed my iPad because we have cameras that are in the front of the house, the back of the house, inside the house. So I grabbed the cameras because I said, this has to be a mistake. This can't be possible. And on the cameras, I can see my husband surrounded by about six or seven agents, and he has on no shirt. He has on just his shorts and no shoes, and they're handcuffing him. And shortly after that, I saw them pull my, my, my son out, and he's standing there with them. So I didn't know if they were about to arrest my son. I didn't know what was going on, and I definitely didn't know why they were arresting Book. Both me and my father, we woke up. I came out of my room to say hello to him, good morning. And then we both heard the door ring. And it was like multiple knocking. So even we were both nervous. So we both quickly went to the door. Um, as soon as my dad opened the door, I saw someone come in the front and it was an FBI agent. And I was even puzzled because I'm like, FBI agent, why? And as I walked like kind of like to behind my father, I saw they also had a battering ram. So that was also scary because I thought they're gonna break, they were going to break down the door if we didn't answer. And you see the door, it's kind of like mostly glass. It was just real scary because I didn't really expect them to be there. And we both thought, this is a joke, right? I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't understand. It just it wasn't making sense to me. And I'm trying to go back in my mind like, you know, is this has something to do with a friend or, you know, somebody who maybe came to visit that we didn't know? I never in a million years thought it had anything to do with basketball. How did you find out exactly what it was about and, and the charges and what he was being accused of? I turned on the TV and it was everywhere. Today, we announced charges of fraud and corruption in the world of college basketball. The picture painted by the charges brought today is not a pretty one. Coaches at some of the nation's top programs soliciting and accepting cash bribes. When they started reading off the charges, I was with my boyfriend and we were just like stunned, like, are we serious? Being really being charged this right now? And um, I saw my dad and I could tell in his eyes he was embarrassed. and. When he finally got out, he just kept apologizing and was sorry that he had to put me through that. I was confused as to why this was a federal issue, why they felt the need to be at my door a little bit before 6 a.m. with the battering ram. I, I, I couldn't, that didn't make sense to me. You know, my husband's not El Chapo. You know, he's, he's, he's not out here murdering people and, and, and you know, causing harm. So I was angry. I was very angry because it could have went so horribly wrong. Is it playtime? It's playtime. No, no <laughs> one's scared of you, my man. You're not scaring anybody. I'm not scared of you. What has this last year been like for you and for your family and for Book? He would stay in the bedroom all day. He would not come out. He'd be in the dark. I would come in and open curtains. 
I'd go back out maybe to fix some lunch or something. He closed them. He didn't want to be bothered. He didn't want to turn on the television. He didn't want to talk to anyone. So I was getting scared. He just withdraws from us. And that's not like Book. He loves to be around people, you know, he loves to talk and laugh and, and stuff. So I know. And I try not to just, you know, overcrowd him and stuff because he does need time to process this. You know, there were times he cried. And I, I let him because he needs to get that emotion out. Hey, 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 man. Hey, hey, hey. Bro, for three. That's a foul, bro. It's been up and down, and I think Book is starting to deal with it a little bit better. Um, but there are days when I immediately know, you know, he's, he's, he's crawled back into that hole. Before, like, like, he was all fine, but now it's just like, I've seen him, like, sad. Like, I've seen him cry. And, like, he's had some real personal talks with me, and it's, it's, I'm, I feel like, like, I feel sad for him as well, because I've never seen him like that, and I've always thought, like, hey, he's, like, the biggest, toughest guy I know. I would never see him cry. My dad was the man of the family. He, he took care of everybody, and now he feels, I feel like he feels hopeless, and, you know, that's the only thing that's really tough for me. What's been the hardest part for Book through all this? The hardest part initially was not being able to talk to the U of A players, not being able to explain to them, listen, I didn't abandon you. You know, I never wanted this to happen. He couldn't talk to them. He, he couldn't tell his side. And I think that's the, that's the part that's really burning him up because he loves to talk, you know? and. He can't go on anything and say how he feels, what he did, what he didn't do, you know, and you just have to sit and listen to people on television, on social media, you know, make you out to be this bad guy and you can't tell your story. That's what's really burning him up right now. And this is why this case just hit him so hard because he's like, wait a minute, you know, I've spent my years just trying to make sure, you know, that these kids can get out the hood and do well for themselves and their families. And, you know, and, and you're stopping me from doing what I love. Sean, have you spoken to Book at all? Is there anything you can share about that? I'm not able to share anything about that. What's the communication been like from the Arizona basketball program? Sean Miller, the coaches, the administration? Um, Romar reached out to Book and told him he was praying for him, he loves him, and hang in there. That's it. Nothing from anybody else? No. Not a call, not a text, not an email. That's it. How do you think Book feels about that? He feels abandoned. You know, he's, he's he feels like, he was deemed guilty and just thrown out with the trash, you know, before there was any, before he was indicted, before he's gone to trial. And he feels like they just wanted to wash their hands of him, you know, let's just get rid of that and go about business. And he knows at the end of the day, this is business, you know, but it still would be nice if, you know, Maybe a card was mailed, like, you know, hey, thinking of you, but it's no one. How much do you talk about as a family or maybe just you and Book about what might happen because of all this? How much does he verbalize the potentially going to jail and, and what's next? This is serious and, and he's always been a person that instead of crying, he finds a way to laugh. But now this is forcing him to say, you know what, this is real life, you know? I can't laugh my way out of this one. This, I'm gonna have to face this and I'm gonna have to deal with it. But he knows that he has his family and we are gonna get through this if we gotta die trying. There's no giving up.